After the sacking of Barack Bahar, Vladimir Milojevic has been appointed the new old uh, manager of Red Star Belgrade. He signed a two and a half year deal with the club. Um, he was manager of the club from 2017 to 2019. Uh, outstanding European success, one Europa League, two Champions Leagues. Um, defeated Liverpool, if you guys remember back to the Champions League a number of years ago, where Milan Popkov scored two goals. Um, beat um, Cologne twice, the German club, uh, in, I believe that was the Europa League. Uh, drew Napoli and drew Arsenal in the Europa League as well. So, sorry, they drew Napoli in the Champions League and then they drew uh, Arsenal in the um, Europa League. So, 149 matches for Red Star, 107 wins. Uh, and the interesting kind of stat is that he's coached 107 matches since he's left Red Star. So, he's co coached as many matches as he had won uh, with Red Star, which is just an interesting fact. So, uh, Al Akhli, 41 matches. Uh, Ike Athens, 7 matches. Al Etifak, 14 matches. Apoel Nicolo, uh, Nicosia, 34. And Apoel Limassol, 11. So I'm going to go back to a little thing about the clubs a little bit later on. So uh, so the first thing is there's a large, ro large roster of players. And some players will leave in the January transfer window. Um, as uh, Zvezan as Terzic said in his uh, press conference. I think the only thing that that's too bad about this appointment is the fact that he's coming at a time where he can't utilize those players and see how he can kind of fit them into the starting lineups or how he can use them uh, because a lot of them are going to be gone by the time uh, the second half of the season starts. So um, the bad part is maybe he would maybe there's something that he can do with some of these players who. Um, maybe didn't get a, a big enough chance under Barak Bakar where you can use him in maybe different positions um, <clears throat> and kind of see what he has in them. So <clears throat> there's no matches, like there's no matches to assess the players. Uh, so he can't really make a decision. So his, his hands, I think, for the most part, are going to be tied when it comes to the, the sale or the loan of players just because he hasn't been around the club in, in with, with these guys around the club, with these players around the club. So he doesn't really know how to kind of use them. It's one thing watching these guys play on television or even at the stadium, but when you're a manager, maybe there's different ways you want to utilize some of these players, which he obviously won't, won't get to do. I think a lot of these players are going to be gone by the time even the kind of friendly matches uh, happen, that, uh, that happen approaching um, the second half of the season. Um, that's probably going to be around mid-January. So by mid-January, you probably want to offload at least two or three players by then. So we're going to see who those players are. Uh, the first thing, first things first, the fact uh, the back line needs to be fixed. Um, here's kind of good news if you like if you don't like Red Star playing three at the back or five at the back, whatever you want to call it. He's only played three at the back or five at the back um, three different times since he's left Red Star. It's not really his thing. Even when he was at the club, I don't know if he ever used three at the back. Um, he's more of a 4-2-3-1 uh, or 4-3-3 guy. Eventually, he'll use, sometimes he'll use 4-4-2. Um, but that's pretty much, or yeah, 4-4-2. He'll sometimes use that formation as well. But more of a 4-2-3-1, which is what he played when, he, when that's the system that he liked when he was at Red Star the first time. That's kind of the system that he's been going, the kind of default, I, I should say, formation that he's been using wherever he's been um, after Red Star. So I wanted to go back to the, play, um, the players, and I said I'm going to get back to some of these teams. So uh, in 149 matches with Red Star in his career, 63 different players used. Um, at Al Akli, 41 matches, 44 players used. Uh, Ike Athens, 7 matches, 25 players used. Uh, Al Etipak, 14 matches, 25 players used. Apoel Nicosia, 34 matches, 31 players used. And Apoel Limassol, uh, 11 matches, 24 players used. So, um, clearly when he was at Red Star, he had those players that he counted on, I would say, from the minute he got here up until probably the minute he left. So, guys like Milan Borjan, Milan Rodic, Marko Gobilic, uh, Slavolub Cernic, you can look at guys like even Mitchell Donald, um, Richmond Boachi when he was here. Like those are all players that he was kind of loyal to, and the players that I think showed him the most. I know it sounds crazy putting um, Marko Gobelic in that category, but this is when we actually got the most out of Gobelic. Um, 
he was really loyal to those players. And 63 players using 149 matches really isn't that much. I, I don't think that's that many players. When you consider domestic league, uh, European league, whether it's uh, Champions League or Europa League, and then the domestic cup, like there's a lot of matches to be played. So 63 players, I don't think is, is that many. Um, and yeah, like I said, he was just loyal to, to, to some of the players that he had on the club. Filip Stojkovic, I guess, another one um, that he just kind of used all those guys. Uh, the only thing I'll say is he didn't produce any youth players when he was at Red Star. And I don't actually have it written down here. There, I looked back at the rosters and kind of the players that he had there. So he had the Ilich brothers there. So Luka and Ivan. Um, uh, Dan Jovilic was there as well. Uros Rasic, if you want to put him into that category as well, he was there. Um, another player that he didn't use. I'm probably missing some as well. But, you know, those are... The difference now is that there's established young players within the club. So, Kosan Edelkovic, obviously, who should be starting right back going forward. You have Mijatovic, who should start every match as well. Then you have guys like Shlivic. Uh, you have guys like Knezhevic. Um, we'll see what happens with the Mitrukic twins as well, because they're on a, on a kind of dual loan with, with OFK Belgrade. Um, so, so there's a lot of players, young players, that have kind of established themselves to the point that they should at least get some playing time. I'm not saying they should be full-time starters, but they, they, they should be at least getting playing time. They should be at least on the bench for every single match. Um, as a whole, I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 on him, you know, coming here as a manager. I know it was, it was kind of, you had to make a quick decision of uh, who is the next guy that was going to be the manager. Um who else do you pick? Marko Nejic, who I've I've said he's the he's the coach of Grafichar, who is Red Star's affiliate. They're in the lower tier. He's 33 years old. I said, and this is before Barak Bahar got sacked. I said if Barak Bahar is getting sacked soon, I think that Nejic should be given, you know, even though he's 33, he should be given a, a five-year contract and just let him work his magic, whatever he can do. He's been outstanding with Grafichar. He's done excellent with the uh, Red Star youth kind of system there so i would really like to see him as the next manager whenever i mean he's he'll be 35 if, if Vladimir Milovic fulfills the entire two and a half years or 36 um if Milovic fulfills the entire two and a half seasons i, I wouldn't mind seeing him there wouldn't mind seeing him um even jovanovic he's a bit older he's at uh, panantiakos who's done he's done well in greece he's been all over the world he's been in cyprus greece uh i think saudi arabia as well the united arab emirates he's also someone that maybe you can kind of rely on. But in terms of other managers, um, Serbia doesn't really have many right now. And the ones that are decent or good, they've come, they've played for Partizan before, which I highly doubt any of them would want to take over Red Star. And I don't think a lot of the Red Star fans would want them at the club. So, um, you know, it's, it's totally understandable. Uh, and I think players who didn't get a chance under Bakar could get a new one now. So I'm talking about guys like um, Edmanado. I'm talking about guys like, Uros Kabic, who was brought in from Wojvodina for about a million euros. He hasn't, we haven't really seen much of him. Milos Degenek, who played under um, Vlada Milovic in his first stint. Uh, Stefan Mitrovic, who were, were already reading some reports that he could get a, a new chance with Vlada Milovic just because of his speed. Vlada Milovic loves to utilize players with speed like he had with Nemanja Radonic. So Stefan Mitrovic is one of those players. And I think what happens with, with Kings Kangwa and Marko Stamenic, we've heard some things. Kings Kangwa has barely played this season. Um, and Marko Stamenic, in the last probably month or so, hasn't played much football after being a standard um, player in their starting 11 when he first got here. And he hasn't played much since. There's some rumors about him possibly going to Russia as well for a fee of around 5 million euros. But we'll see what happens with that. I think it's way too early to sell him. I think he could be a very good player in a, in a season or two. Kongwell, we'll, we'll have to wait and see um, what happens with him once Milovic gets back. But I think the first things first, the back line needs to be fixed. Does Milovic play a little bit of boring football? Yeah, I think he does, but it's hard to argue that when the results are there. The amount of titles that he's won with Red Star, the amount of success he's had, making the Champions League, making the Europa League from, from basically the first, from the preliminary um, stages of, of, of your uh, Champions League qualifying, which is the stage before round one. I mean, he's done an extraordinary job. He's, he, Red Star was the first team to start from the preliminary round of qualifying and make to the Champions League. I think they did that in both the Champions League and the Europa League which was outstanding. Um, so yeah, I, I'm like I said, I'm 50-50 on this because in, in the sense that, you know, it is a little bit of boring football and you're always wary of who he's going to sell or loan out in the January transfer window. 
Uh, but in terms of defensively, I think I think this team will be fixed defensively. I don't think it could get any worse. And I just think that playing three at the back or five at the back uh, wasn't the best idea from Barack Bakar. Uh, he was here for way too long and didn't have a formation in mind that he was going to use. So hopefully this is something that Vladimir Milic can fix. Uh, from you guys, let me know in the comments what you think of the appointment of Vladimir Milic, what you thought about the Barack Bakar sacking, which players you think would leave, which players you think will have a bigger role at the club. Let me know.